Hey everybody, good morning. Let me see if I can just share this really quick. Uh, okay, I can. All right, cool. So um, I tried to make this video uh, last Friday and it's to uh, answer a question that came in from uh, Kevin, who's actually part of our collective. And if you want to find out more information about the Satori Prime Collective, head over to uh, satoriprime.com backslash collective. And the question really came in um, about meditation and suggestions on meditation. Uh, if you're getting on here right now, uh, feel free to hit some likes, make some comments, just say hello. Um, <clears throat> so hi everybody who's joining me right now. And uh, yeah, like I said, the question here is, came in from Kevin about suggestions on meditation. Um, so just want to rewind it a little bit. I was uh, dabbling in, in meditation for many years and then about three years ago, I went and sat in uh, a silent meditation practice for 10 days. And if you're interested in doing that, I highly recommend it. Uh, the practice is called Vipassana or Vipassana. Uh, if you go to Dhamma, D-H-A-M-M-A dot org, uh, you can actually look at it, see if it's a good fit for you. And if you have a calling to go there, it is free to participate and is um, purely done by volunteers. It's actually... Uh, something that I give money to every single year so that other people can participate for free. And I really recommend that experience. I know that might seem intense or long. It was certainly one of the most prolific experiences of my life. So a lot of my understanding over the last three years um, was built on top of that foundation of doing that 10-day silent meditation practice. So without going into all that and kind of keeping this a little bit more baseline, um, it's a question that we get often. And for me, uh, something that's become really clear about the de developmental process of a human being is that there are kind of these uh, two different paths to waking up, right? So you, uh, or I should say there's one path for waking up and there's one path for uh, growing up. And depending on which path you kind of choose to take, um, there's a point in time where I feel like that's kind of where we are right now in the developmental stages that we actually get to uh, bridge these two worlds. So you can think of like the Western world or left brain as kind of the uh, the growing up, you know, aspect of the world and the Eastern philosophy, Eastern traditions, Eastern religions as the waking up process. So for me with meditation, I think where a lot of people get stuck in it, especially with Western minded type people, is that they've been told that this is a practice for uh, relaxing the mind or controlling the mind or wrangling the mind or, you know, it's just like it's about relaxation and it's peace. And certainly while that's a beautiful side effect of meditation, I think the, the most important aspect of it is looking at it as a definable healing tool that actually requires no personal processing on your part whatsoever. Okay. So if I was to say um, what it looks like to be whole, we, we throw that word around a lot. We say we are one, wholeness, stuff like that. What I find with most of uh, people who are working with us or look at our work or even me as well, and I did this for many years, is that there are these quote unquote negative aspects that we've created, right? The sad, the anger, um, these type of things. And we say, well, I want to be this really powerful human being and I want to be in my alignment and all these things. So I'm going to be right here. But these aspects of me that I don't like and that society has told me are no good. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to put them over here and I'm no longer going to look at them. And I'm going to do all this developmental work so that I'm so aware and so powerful that I can overcome these aspects of myself. And I tried that for a really long time, like a decade, and that just simply does not work. I actually think that's what's wrong in a lot of cases with personal development today. And the kind of started in the 1980s empowerment movement is that it leaves you with this impression and this feeling that you're going to become so aware that you won't have to experience these negative aspects. And then what ends up happening is that you ultimately do end up experiencing them because something in your life happens. You hit this wall. You don't know how to deal with it. The overwhelm, the anxiety, the stress comes back in and you feel or you think to yourself, like, didn't we already work on this? I already did this. How come it's coming back again? And it's coming back again because guess what? You can't overcome these pieces. They're kind of baked in and they're always going to be there for you to kind of have to look at in different ways. So for me, it's like when you're going through any kind of growth enlightenment process, you're not necessarily getting rid of anything because there's nothing wrong with you to get rid of. What you're essentially doing is you're pushing out the walls of what you're willing to accept. This creates a, a feeling of more space 
and in that space that's you where that jubilation that joy that immediate experience of being once again in the unknown in this un um like uncreated space and then the next part is actually using things like manifestation you know and, and law of attraction to put something in that space to to call forth different type of experiences so with meditation what what i would gather is that when if you're early on in your practice you're probably sitting there and then you notice the voice chimes in and then what i find is a lot of people as the voice chimes in they 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 start fighting it and they think that that's not supposed to happen guys that's like anything else it's baked into the system it's going to continue to happen the point is not to try to defeat it or make it stop happening it's to just notice that it is right so meditation for me is just noticing that it's just starting to observe parts of yourself. So basic Buddhist teachings will tell you that you want to get yourself to a point where you're no longer craving and you're no longer averting. Said another way, you're no longer attached and you're no longer resisting. And as you relax the body, that's kind of what automatically and naturally happens. So what you will notice is if you meditate and you're putting your observational power in the body is that you will notice that you're holding tension in the body, right? If you have ever been to a yoga class or anything else, what do they tell you to do is to uh, relax your jaw, right? Because this is a, a part that actually will, will indicate to you that you're holding stress in the body. Most of us are holding a tight stomach, right? We're holding tight shoulders. It's like, and all these things, by the way, are like defensive postures and contractions that your body has learned over time to actually protect yourselves from different like energy things that happen. Really like easy thing to notice with somebody when you're talking to them, or, or anything else, just notice their body posture if their you know, shoulders are in and going like this and they're pushing their, their heart cavity back, they're actually trying to protect their heart. They're probably sad about something and it's an indicator. You know, confident people usually have their shoulders back. They're really open, the heart's out here, it's accessible and all that kind of stuff. So in meditation, what I would offer to you is that we live in a lot of different states. Some of these are, are dualistic and some of these are, are non-dual states. So for instance, uh, plant medicine work or deep meditation work, breath work, is all to give you access so that you can see and have a direct line experience to a non-dual state. Generally speaking though, in language, everything is duality, right? So most of the time people are fixated on one side or the other side of their lives. They want to be fixated on abundance only, not saying that if abundance is there, then non-abundance is, is there as well. And they get to explore both at the same time. So what you're going to end up finding is in meditation, you're going to have this ability to actually observe and explore both simultaneously instead of just being fixated on one. And this is really the gift. Can you look at things like love? Can you look at things like not love? and relax into them at the same time with the same excitement and breath as you would otherwise. Because it's really just getting rid of the attachment. <laughs> Somebody walked in and it's, it's got my attention. Um, yeah, you're just looking at, can I sit with both, accept both fully? And then what ends up happening naturally is that when the brain sees that you're not creating judgment, on top of what you're observing, something really magical happens. So just be with this for a second, right? You're meditating, you're having an experience, there's some kind of sensation in your body. And that's really the only truth that I've been able to find to date about the human system is that we have sensations inside the body. Everything else we're pretty much making up. That judgment that this, this is this kind of emotion, this is anger that I'm experiencing. Now I'm judging the fact that I'm having anger. Like that's all the stuff that we start layering on top of it that makes it very difficult to just be with what's so. Because you've probably been told your entire life like I have, you know, don't be angry, don't be sad, don't show this emotion, don't express that. You know, the, you know all, all, all these kind of little myths that we've picked up along the way. And when you meditate, it's this opportunity to just be with the sensation that's arising in the body. And can you be with that sensation w without judging it? When you do that, something very magical happens in your brain because you're not giving your brain more stimulus to attach to that thing. And when you don't give the brain stimulus to attach that thing through judgment, through some kind of sensational judgment, you're telling the brain, this is not that important. Don't worry about this. And it actually starts unwinding all the little connection points that you've made to that thing. And, and this is why for me, this is one of the most critical things 
that if you really want to be growing as a human being, I used to say meditation was a recommendation, but if you're not necessarily looking at the personal development like it's taught in the Western world, which is all about this growing up aspect, but you're looking at enlightenment in the Eastern philosophical point of view, you want to start having mystical experiences. You want to start having non-dual experiences. You want to start connecting to whatever it is that you adhere to as God or source or, or the greater intelligence of the universe. And you want to start having those experiences. The meditation is not a recommendation. It's a requirement. It is the baseline foundational thing of everything that's going to happen into that state. And they're both important, by the way. And a lot of what we, we work on now with our organization is not just doing the growing up work and not just doing the waking up work, they're both important, is how do you find a bridge between the two where you're both enlightened and you're living with full integrity and all these other things that this kind of stuff talks about. So that's really what I want to kind of leave you guys with here today more than an answer is a curiosity is that there really is no right or wrong way to do meditation. However, if I wanted to give you kind of like a, a, a target to aim at, is like as the mind kicks in, oh, hi, thank you for being there. Thank you for doing your job. As the sensation kicks in the body, oh, hi there. Thank you for doing your job. It's all unfolding perfectly. There's no other way it can unfold. It doesn't matter what your judgments, where your controls, all the thoughts that you're having about how it should and shouldn't be. None of that stuff really ultimately matters and actually hinders the velocity of your ability to grow. Give it up and just see if you can notice that everything is actually unfolding in its natural, perfect way all the time and that your judgments and assessments really don't matter. It's just a way to actually slow down progress. So hopefully that gives you guys some insights. To Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I'll wrap up here real quick. So, um, yeah, so if you have any questions about meditation, if you have any questions about the work that we're doing uh, at Satori Prime, by all means, drop them in the comment box and I will happily reply. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like uh, or share this video and I will see you next time. Bye guys.